Hello chaps and chapesses, and this week we're going to listen to my business partner Charlotte Chilcott give a presentation at the London Fly Fishing Show on her recent trip to Cameroon. Good afternoon and thank you very much for staying to watch this uh, short presentation on Cameroon. I know it's not on everybody's uh, main list of places to go to catch anything really, never mind anything quite special. But there's an awful lot of fish here in an area that no one's fished before. And in this tiny little bit of Africa, um, there's an awful lot of species waiting to be found. I wasn't sure what to take. Did I need me a kit? Did I, could I take what I had? So I packed up a 5 weight, a 9 weight, and an 11 weight, and 3 reels, and basically hoped for the best. It's very simple. I thought I'd put a photograph of the actual camp and the tents in, but I got the loom, so apologies for that. Anyway, it's very simple. You get the picture. In terms of flies, again, we didn't really know what to take, what to tie, what was going to work, what wasn't. Um, but this little beastie was an absolute killer. Whether it was orange and black, yellow and black, it caught an perch. And because we were fishing in a very remote area, we really needed somebody with us who knew what they were doing. Um, we had a hunting concession on one side and a national park on the other. And these two chaps, who did smile once in the week, were there with their garments to look after us and keep us out of trouble. These two colourful uh, individuals, two of the best guides I've ever had the pleasure of fishing with anywhere in the world, and uh, they were probably the best people you could want to have on your side if you're fishing somewhere very remote when you don't have any idea what you're doing. This is it. This is how tough the terrain is. You may look at that and see these little pools and think we would just bypass them. But they're actually big pools and they're all worth fishing. There's tiger fish in them, there's small juvenile perch. And we started at the bottom one morning and just fished our way up to that main carrier. And we caught fish, we didn't land any fish, but we hooked fish all the way up. Nile perch are slightly more picky. We need deeper water. It's uh, got to be a little fast flowing in the middle. Deep ledges for them to hide around on the edges. And it's a little less tricky, but not much. And that's just a little stretch of this whole river system that we have to fish. But you can't access most of it. It's just too hard. And in time, I know they'll open up more of it. And that will be even more exciting, I think. There's so much water and a lot of hippo. As evening falls, you know you're going to be setting up for a Nile perch session. And the important thing is get into your place, make sure you know where you are. It's really not somewhere you want to fall in at night because of these beasts. There's a lot of them. There's about 600 in the section of river we were fishing. And they don't make any allowances for idiots. But this is one of the reasons I've gone to Canada, is tiger fish. I like tiger fishing. And there are three species here, so two of whom I'd never had a chance to even target before. So I was quite hopeful I might get lucky. And I didn't catch any vitatas. These are the fish that you find you normally find on the Zambezi. That's their, their main homeland. That's what most people associate with tiger fish. But Hydrocinus brevis is quite distinctive in that it's the only one with colour only on one fin has that white stripe down on the inside and it's got a very small mouth so it's quite hard to hook and keep and it aerializes a lot so if you get it it's going to be jumping as soon as it's hooked and then you just hold on and that's why you hold on because you're quite high <laughs> and you can see how narrow that bit of water is um, in the, as I say, we were fishing for tigers but equally there's yellow fish and we weren't lucky for that week. We couldn't persuade them to take anything. Uh, I did rise a couple to a dry fly, 
but they weren't interested in any of our links. And over the week after we were there, they had many more. Mostly because I think the South African chat fishing for them does it all the time. Uh, they've still got to crack the code. But these fish are big, they're eight or nine pounds. Uh, and they're, they're in big numbers. But that wasn't really what most of them wanted to catch in my week, I have to admit. So this is the kind of dream that you're fishing in at night, perched on a rock in the middle of a river. And sun setting, you're getting ready. The hippos, you can see one there in the background. The hippos are getting ready as well, because night times when they come out. And as sun sets, the torches go off, and the flies go in the water. And I think the trick with Nile Perch, and I'm sure somebody's going to prove me wrong quite quickly, is not to be consistent about anything you do. So the strip is inconsistent, slow, fast, mix it up. And they hit very, very hard, and you just have to hang on, because it will run you into the fresh oyster beds, and that cuts like coral. It will strip your line, it will break your wind. And uh, these things quite dirty. If there's a small ledge, a big ledge, any kind of ledge, They'll hide under it, they'll suck themselves into a hole, and they just sit tight. Um, and it takes a little bit of patience, a very long stick, and some very nimble South Africans to manage to get them out and back into a fighting position. But eventually we got some in, and this one was about 113 centimetres, which was roughly 48 pounds. And we finally managed to lift him out of the water to weigh in. It wasn't the only one of you. We've got some very big fish, but you can see from the size of that paddle that they are not fish that hang around. They go fast, they go hard, and ultimately they are just a fabulous species to try to target. It's a tough environment to do it in, and I'd never fished in the dark before. So it did show up my limitations on casting in the living way, but um, it all worked out well, and everyone had a good week. But this is one of the few places left anywhere that you can consistently catch big Nile perch. The big fisheries of the past are really struggling. And if, you, if, if this, this is a species that you would like to, to add to your list, then you're going to have to look a little further afield and be prepared to rough it quite a lot. Anyway, I'll leave you with this one. It always ends up with something going wrong and being slapped in the face by a tail is probably the best way to leave this little presentation. Thank you very much. As always, I hope you found that presentation as interesting as I did. And if you did, then please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.